impulsivity is obviously at the heart of addiction and behavior. Uh, that you know, compulsive behavior is addiction in large part. Uh, and yet, when I think about you know, from my own perspective, biochemical repair, what are we what are we trying to fix? What are we trying to help? What kind of behavior seems to be most ameliorated with nutrient repair and the lifestyle? Uh, tools that we try to arm people with, you know, I think of things like low blood sugar, right? And so when someone has low blood sugar because they've been drinking or because they're in withdrawal, it makes them more impulsive. I know that I'm more impulsive when I have low blood sugar. And obviously the thing I'm most likely to do impulsively is eat, but there are other things as well, right? I'm, there's a, a paucity or a lack of dopamine when you have low blood sugar, uh, and it can make you do things that you otherwise might not do. You might snap at someone. You might say something. Everyone knows, you know, if you get hangry, it's a very common thing. You get hangry and you snap at someone and, and later on you have to apologize, right? So that's like short-term impulsivity most people can relate to. What a lot of people don't realize is that alcohol is a highly refined sugar that causes a ridiculous roller coaster in blood sugar levels. You know, you drink and then you have an, an increase in blood sugar. Insulin comes, wipes out the blood sugar, wipes out amino acids that are precursors for neurotransmitters like dopamine. Later on, you're low dopamine and you're low blood sugar. So that's just one pathway. Uh, in addition to that, you know, you would have um, like sleep deprivation, which is very common with addiction, maybe because you're up all night taking drugs or drinking, uh, or just the fact that as we know from, uh, I can't remember the call, I think it's Dr. Uh, Matt Walker, who wrote Why We Sleep, just one drink disrupts your REM sleep. So imagine you having 10 drinks or even five drinks, uh, or if you're like me, 20 or 30 drinks, night after night after night, you're getting basically no REM sleep, you're never rested. And we know that there is a, a correlation between impulsive behavior and sleep deprivation. Uh, there's lack of clarity, the prefrontal cortex doesn't function properly. So that's another, you know, it's a double whammy at that point. Actually, it's probably a triple, quadruple, quintuple whammy, you know, because there are other things going on, dysregulation of your stress hormones. So people who are drinking or using drugs have often a imbalances with cortisol, adrenaline, um, even on a neurotransmitter level, you have too much glutamate. So that's more brain electrical activity, which it would seem I haven't, I mean, I'm not a researcher, but I wouldn't be surprised to find that people with an excess of glutamate and a deficiency in GABA, GABA being the calming neurotransmitter, would be more likely to act impulsively, right? So you can, everyone knows who's who's been a drinker, the feeling of being shaky or being frenetic. And that seems to be related to actions that can be impulsive that are taken in an effort to try to distract from that unpleasant uh, sort of manic state um, or just doing things because you're you're you know your mind is like a a, a pinball on a box car i think someone said uh, recently maybe it was bb i can't recall old saying but you know your brain is just on fire and so you just need to do something and, and it's not always the best thing you know for some people it could be eating uh, for other people, it could just be drinking more or taking more of the drugs. For other people, it could be, you know, acting out sexually in, inappropriately, doing all sorts of things. Um, so there's there's a wide variety of manifestations of impulsive behavior. And I can recall when I, I worked in New York, which was my old stomping ground, and it's always funny to go back there. And I have I have a sort of Zen now, and I've done yoga and meditation, and I read books before bed. I, I get you know, seven to nine hours of sleep most of the time. I try to average eight, it's probably more like seven recently. Um, but I'm in a much different mind space and my physiology is so different and I have no interest in immersing myself in the toxic alcohol culture. It's such a noisy place compared to where I live now here in Savannah. You know, my blood pressure always comes down when, I, when I'm here, when I return here. But when I go there, you know, I, I start thinking of like some of the things that I did that seem insane. And I recall sitting in my office in New York um, and there was a Wendy's on the, in the basement floor. We were on like the 30th floor. And if I had bad enough withdrawal, you know, my hands are shaking and I'm trying to do spreadsheets at my desk. My boss was yelling or whatever. And I, I remember reaching the point frequently. I would say, I can't take this. It was too early to justify drinking at that time. But that's what, that's what I really wanted was to have a drink. But my best outlet for my impulsive energy was to take the elevator to the, the basement of the building, go into Wendy's and order like a, I don't know, egg sausage thing, biscuit thing, 
or maybe if I'd missed that, it was I would get some kind of ridiculous, you know, fast food cheeseburger situation with fries and always a Diet Coke. I was drinking Diet Cokes throughout the day, which in retrospect is appalling. But I would do that. I would have the the you know fried potatoes and the um, and the greasy meat or eggs or whatever, and the carbs, the processed carbs and all the grease, and that would just kind of like oh, it, would, it would calm down my system for a minute. I didn't realize any of the things that I just said were going on. I just thought I was defective or that I was stupid or that I was immoral, that I couldn't handle myself. And I had to go down and, and I would literally sit in the corner. I remember once I had colleagues that were walking somewhere, they'd probably gotten gone to have a, a meeting at some uh, you know, healthy breakfast place and they were returning. <laughs> and I was sitting in this Wendy's alone and I was wearing my suit. And I, and I saw them coming. I ducked under the table because I didn't want them to see me stuffing my face with Wendy's, you know, for, for no reason alone. Uh, so, yeah, that was that was embarrassing.